Adolescence is hard, regardless of your species, and juvenile hawks on the verge of flight have it especially rough. They have to hone their flight skills, practice hunting, and avoid human-made obstacles, all before migrating to their wintering sites thousands of kilometers away. Our clinic treats hawks injured during this sensitive life stage and returns them to the wild in time for their very first long distance journeys. Seven hawk species breed in Alberta, but the species most frequently seen in our clinic are Swainson's hawks. These powerful hunters are known for their long distance migrations of over 10,000 kilometers from their wintering sites in South America all the way to the Canadian prairies and beyond during the summer breeding season. Young hawks fledge in the weeks leading up to the fall migration. This gives them a short window to learn how to fend for themselves. Curious and often overconfident, these teenage hawks can stray too close to human-made hazards, with many injured or killed before they can undertake their first migration. We see 25 to 30 injured young hawks come through our clinic each year almost all of which between the months of August and September. 30% of Swainson's hawks come into our clinic with injuries from vehicle collisions. Grassy areas full of ground squirrels on the edge of highways are already enticing hunting grounds for young birds. But add in the alluring sight of roadkill and roadsides become a magnet for hungry hawks who haven't learned how dangerous vehicles can be. Young hawks can also be injured by barbed wire, striking windows, and severe weather. These human-made hazards can cause severe injuries for hawks entering care, and many don't make it to release. Hawks that do survive are given intensive treatment by our expert clinic team, all to get them back on their feet and back to the wild. In hawks, similar to all of our birds of prey, we see a lot of traumatic injuries from either getting hit by a car, getting caught in barbed wire out here in the farmlands, or things like electrocution are also really common. And so if they're injured in that way, they often come in with broken wings, broken shoulders, head trauma. And the juveniles, sometimes, especially in summer, we get them in, um, especially our Swainson's hawks, when they're still figuring out how to fly, their immune system isn't as strong, so sometimes they'll also have infections with parasites as well. So often they're found kind of just out in a field, not able to get back up to hunt again, um, learning how to fly or learning how to hunt, and then they more just need supportive care and maybe treating if they have a parasite to get them stronger and able to hunt again. If they have head trauma, we treat them with anti-inflammatory medications. Sometimes we'll provide supplemental oxygen. We make sure that their eyes are fully visual and they don't have any damage to the retina or elsewhere in the eye. If they have fractures, a lot of them can heal depending on where it is. We have to make sure it's not too close to a joint. If it is, we worry that it can cause chronic pain and arthritis if that joint gets disrupted. So if it's somewhere in the middle of the bone and something that we can treat easily, we can either do surgery to pin it or we can kind of immobilize the fracture by putting on, instead of a cast, we'll wrap the wing or something like that. It can take weeks for a healing hawk to recover from their injuries. And during that time, our staff provide them with special accommodations to keep them comfortable and assess their condition. So we have a couple of spaces uh, for our raptors. We have one room um, inside of our main clinic that is designated just for birds of prey. And that's basically where we put them until they're medically cleared or that's where we start raising our juveniles. Then we have some larger spaces downstairs that can give them some flight space before moving them into our brand new runway, which has five different sections in it, which is a huge flight pen for them which can give them lots of space to fly around and practice. Yeah, it's just a great spot for them. Swainson's hawks are very sweet, especially in comparison to other hawks that we get in. They're typically very calm in care. They're very easy to deal with. They are still feisty when we do go to handle them, but out of everything else, they tend to love their food. But other than that, if you're just like opening up the door to do like our daily checks on them, they're very chill. They also make it very hard to flight test them or flight condition them because you can just walk up to them outside and they will try to tell on you instead of trying to fly away. Once a hawk is ready for release, we have to figure out when and where to release them. We try our best to release hawk patients before their species have left for the winter. But how do we know when they're gone? Well, this is where citizen science comes into play. Using apps like eBird and iNaturalist, our team can track sightings of hawks throughout the fall migration season. This tells us where the best release sites are given the current stage of migration. By mid-October, most migratory hawks have left the province for the winter. But our team watches closely 
for stray sightings to ensure that no straggler patient is left behind. As you might guess, the last few Swainson's hawk sightings of the year trend southward. And so our team releases our last few hawk patients as far south as possible, usually south of Calgary. Thankfully, it's rare for us to keep hawk patients over winter, meaning those rowdy young hawks get to take part in their first migration after all. We might be able to help hawks after they've been injured, but prevention is the best medicine for keeping these majestic birds wild. As we mentioned earlier, young hawks are attracted to roadkill, and there are actions we can all take to reduce the number of animals struck by vehicles. Driving slower on rural roads, especially at night, can reduce our chances of striking an animal. Leaving organic waste on roadsides attracts prey animals to roads, which in turn attracts predators like hawks. Securing all waste in our vehicles can help keep wildlife off our roads and safe from collisions. Finally, you can help us better release patients by logging hawk and other bird sightings in the eBird or iNaturalist apps. This builds a strong data set for us to use when making release decisions. Have we turned you into a Swainson's Hawk fan today? Consider purchasing a sticker featuring today's avian star. You can get yours at the AIWC shop or donate directly to our wildlife rehabilitation mission. Links in the description. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Alberta Wildlife Insider. See you next time.